I've been getting a lot of requests lately to review a very specific laptop. It's one that runs the Apollo Lake processor. It's sub $300 price point and it comes from China. You know what I'm talking about. It's the Chewy Lapbook 14. Hi, my name's Andrew and this is the review of the Chewy Lapbook 14. Let's find out if it's worth your money. If you watch my channel, you know I've reviewed my share of Cherry Trail Atom devices and you know that performance is certainly not its strong suit. Needing something with more power and more stepped up performance, I quickly turned to Apollo Lake devices and many of you have been requesting that I review this device. It's the Lapbook 14 by Chewy. Let's find out if it is worth your money. Underneath the hood of this bad boy is the Intel Celeron processor. It's the N3450 or otherwise known as the Apollo Lake processor. It's got 4 gigabytes of DDR3L RAM and it's got 64 gigabytes of eMMC storage. Now there is an open slot where you can put a SATA M2 SSD drive. We'll talk more about that later in this video. Now I purchased this from banggood.com. I paid $299 but you may be able to get it on sale. I'll put the link below for more information. The star of this show has to be its 14.1 inch IPS matte display. It has a resolution of 1920 by 1080, a full HD resolution. That's 156 pixels per inch and it has a 16 by 9 aspect ratio. At 207 nits, it's not the brightest screen in the world, but I can forgive it because it has a matte display as opposed to a high glossy display. That means you can read this outdoors without too much of a problem. Still, at this price point, I'm a little bit more forgiving than normal. At 60% sRGB, color accuracy is not the highest, but again, at $300 price point, you can't expect that much. But this is a case where the numbers don't tell the whole story. It really is a very good display. I like the fact that it's a matte display as opposed to the high gloss display and really has very good viewing angles. Bottom line, Chewy did a very good job on this display. I was really surprised at how good the build quality was with its frost white exterior. It really has a very good look and overall build construction. At 3.3 pounds, it's not that heavy and at 0.79 inches, it's not that thick. For a 14 inch device, it has a very good feel in the hands. As far as the ports are concerned, here's what you get. On the right side of the device, you have your micro SD card slot for storage expansion. Next to that, you have a 3.5 millimeter headset jack and it worked very well. And you have a USB Type A 2.0. On the left side of the device, you have your power port. That's where you'll plug your device in. And of course, you have a USB 3.0 Type A. Next to that, you find your mini HDMI port to connect to a TV or a monitor. On the bottom of the device, you find your four feet along with two bottom facing speakers. We'll talk more about the sound later in this review. Now the bottom is removable and you can install a M2 SATA SSD drive in a spare slot as you see there. Now I will be doing a separate video on installing the SSD drive, so stay tuned for that. Chris over at Tech Tablets also did one, so check that out as well. But perhaps the biggest star of this show has to be its keyboard. It's a black island style, chiclet style keys. And because they are black, they're easy to identify. Now there's no backlight on this device and at the $299 price point, I wasn't expecting one. Now there is also no brightness control as far as a keyboard shortcut. I think a little bit of a negative there. But for some reason, Chewy decided to put the delete button next to the enter button. And the power button is where the delete button should be. So go figure. But nonetheless, this is probably the best keyboard on a laptop from China, bar none. And at 2.2 millimeters of key travel, it makes it one of the more comfortable keyboards to type on for long periods of time. Chewy did an outstanding job on this keyboard. Now, Chinese laptops traditionally have terrible trackpads. Take a look at my review of the Jumper EasyBook Air and you'll know exactly what I mean. Here there are a few negatives, but overall I think it's pretty good. Now one of the big negatives of it, if you're going to find one, is the fact that the default scroll is in reverse to the natural scroll. Two finger scroll works and the Windows 10 gestures work, but there is no way to disable the trackpad as Chewy did not give you that option. But overall, without question, the keyboard is probably the strong suit on this device and perhaps out of any device out of China right now. 
Chewy outfitted the Lapbook 14 with a 2 megapixel webcam on the front. Let's take a look at it in action. So this is the webcam on the Chewy Lapbook 14.1. It shoots 640 by 480 at 30 frames per second. And this is also a, an example of the microphone as far as quality is concerned. Not the greatest. This is a bit grainy as far as the uh, video is concerned. If you need to do Skype, if you need to do some web conferencing, it certainly gets the job done. Now, the placement of the microphones are at the top of the keyboard right below the display. And this is what it sounds like if you're going to be typing and doing a video conference or Skype at the same time. This is what it sounds like. So that's the camera on the Chewy Lapbook 14.1. There are two bottom facing speakers on the device and let's take a look and a listen at our latest video to hear them in action. Hi, my name's Andrew and this is the review of the HP Spectre X360 15 inch version that has just come out here early 2017. Let's find out if it's worth your money. Ever since HP released the Spectre line in 2015 and the HP Spectre X360, they've been opening eyes and turning... Suffice it to say, I wasn't blown away by these speakers. The mids were not great. There was a lack of bass and volume wasn't the loudest. So it is serviceable overall and I think these are mediocre at best. Now this runs Windows 10 Home. It's 64-bit and it is activated. So that's a good sign coming out of China. That is four gigabytes of DDR3L RAM, and it runs at its full 1600 megahertz capacity. Looking for a performance boost over the Cherry Trail Atom processors I reviewed in the past, I was curious to see how the Apollo Lake processor would do. On the Geekbench 4 test, it did a 3504 on the multi-core score, a definite improvement over the Atom processor, and its built-in graphics did 7,776. The Chewy Lapbook 14 has a SanDisk eMMC storage, which has 64 gigabytes in capacity, of which about 43 gigabytes are available to the user. And as I stated earlier, there's an open slot where you can install an SSD drive, and you can also run the operating system off that SSD drive for stepped up performance. Stay tuned for my video, I'll show you how to install it, and we'll run some benchmarks. And speaking of benchmarks, here's how the SanDisk eMMC storage did on the Crystal Disk Mark test. It did a 187.7 on the read and a very good 104.6 on the write. These are some of the best scores I've seen on an eMMC on any device coming out of China or any budget notebook for that matter. Of course, you will do better on an SSD drive, so check out my video when I do the install to see those benchmarks in action. So bottom line, real world usage, you're going to be able to do more with this Apollo Lake processor device than you can with any Cherry Trail processor any day. Now you can do some gaming, some 1080p gaming, believe it or not, but I can. This is not a gaming machine by any stretch of the imagination and I wouldn't do some high-end video editing, but maybe even a little light video editing along with some Photoshop can get the job done. But what really surprised me the most was just how much better this was than on the Atom Cherry Trail processor. It's not quite as good as the Core M3 we've seen in the past, but not that far behind. So really, I have a sneaking suspicion that Apollo Lake can live up to the billing. And really, there is no reason to get an Atom device at this point when their price difference is not that much and the performance is that much better. The Chewy Lapbook 14 has 802.11 AC dual band wireless and it has Bluetooth 4.0. And both work very well. There were no issues on either front. Now the Lapbook 14 sports a 45 watt hour battery and here's how it did on the AMD Tech Endurance Test. With the screen at 200 nits of brightness and with Wi-Fi on, here's how it did under what I call normal usage, which is YouTube, Netflix, some web browsing, and some light gaming, you're gonna get about seven and a half hours. On the movie playback test, which consists of playing a 1080p video, it got about six and a half hours. Now, as far as charging times is concerned, it takes about three and a half hours to fully charge from zero to 100% with its 12 volts, two amps output. So, at the end of the day, can I recommend the Chewy Lapbook 14.1? Is it worth your hard earned money? And the answer is yes, yes, yes. This has got to be one of the best devices to come out of China. First, here's what I like. I like it's nice matte 1080p display. It's solid build and quality. Even though it's plastic, it's still very good quality nonetheless. 
it. I like the fact that it has a fast SanDisk eMMC, some of the best scores we've seen on an eMMC coming out of China. And I like the fact that there's an open slot where you can put in your own M2 SSD drive. Stay tuned for my installation video with benchmarks coming very soon. And I like the fact that the keyboard has such great key travel. Despite it not being backlit, it's still one of the best keyboards to come out of China, bar none. And I like the fact that it gets pretty good battery life overall. And you can do some gaming even at 1080p, believe it or not. But as with any device, there are going to be things that need improvement. Now here's the things I don't like on this device that I think they need to improve in the next iteration. First, there's no keyboard shortcut for brightness. I think that's a little bit of an annoyance, but certainly not a deal breaker. And the speakers were mediocre at best. I didn't care for its subpar webcam, nor did I care for its poor microphone placement, which made for some awkward Skype conversations. Now, if you really push the device, it can run a bit hot, and there is a thermal mod you can do. There are other videos online that show you how to do it. I think Tech Tablets also has one, so check it out. But with those few negatives aside, I have to say this is one of the best $300 budget laptops you can ever buy. It's got everything you'd want. It's got a full 1080p matte display. It's got good battery life. It's got good performance. It's got an excellent keyboard and overall build and quality. Checking all the boxes that you'd want on a budget laptop. That's why I'm going to give this a 90% score, making this the AMD Tech Editor's Choice in the sub $300 laptop category, making this worth your money. So what do you think about the Chewy Lapbook 14? Do you think it checks all the boxes you'd want out of a budget laptop out of China? And the answer is yes, I think it does. It's got the nice screen, good battery life, good construction in terms of build, and it's got very good performance. I also love its keyboard. But I'm curious to know what you think. Leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know what you think of the Lapbook 14. Have you picked one up? Are you considering getting one? Leave a comment in the comment section below. I am curious to know. And don't forget to check out my new vlog, the Top Down Tech Talk. Episode one just premiered. It's where I drive around in my convertible in beautiful Las Vegas, Nevada and talk tech, talk this channel and talk about life. So check it out. I'll put the link below. So please hit the like button. Please subscribe. Please share this video. Don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below. Let me know how I'm doing. Let me know if there's a device or something out there you think I should review. I'll try to make that happen. Don't forget to check us out on Facebook and on Twitter and our website, amdtechreviews.com. So until next time, this is Andrew from AMD Tech. See ya.